Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So you know how the double punch was so much fun because it loads from two magazines and uses both of them effectively at the same time. What if I told you there was a blaster that used not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight magazines at the same time? Don't believe me? Already heavy. Oh god, we're only halfway done with this. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. <laughs> Look at this! This is eight bags at the same time. Oh my gosh, this is freaking unusable. <laughs> Get these bags out. Yeah, stuff switching external box magazines via use of pulling it out and putting a new one in. That's so lame. Switch to a different one by literally rotating it into place. This is the Nerf Hailfire, a nugget that for some reason has kind of blown under the radar over the years, and not very many people actually bring it up or even remember what it is. Why is that? Well, let's try and find out. So the Hailfire, a blaster that was released in the first generation of N-Strike Elite back when this series was brand new and Hasbro really didn't know what to do with it, and honestly, this is one of the funniest blasters ever released, not just because it, oh, it's a nugget. Nah, mate, this isn't a nugget. This isn't the whole chicken. This, right here, is the entire farm, farmer included. And over the past few months, a lot of people have asked me what I would think of a heavy gunner version of the Strife, and well, here it is. This is basically the closest thing anybody could get to a heavy gunner Strife, unless something like the Macedon that was just semi-automatic, and that's the Ultra 1, and everybody knows how awful that thing is, even if it didn't shoot Ultra Darts, it's just a mediocre blaster in general. This thing does something completely different, having a rotating wheel on the bottom that you can plug eight different magazines into at the same time, and unlike the Strife or any conventional blaster where you're meant to easily be able to reload it at any time, this thing is meant to, well, before you start the game, you flip it over, you put your eight mags in, and then throughout the round you flip it back over and don't touch anything until the round is over, or until you get a break where you can flip it over and switch out all the mags at the same time. It's actually a really interesting interesting idea, uh, but there's a reason that this was never done again. First though, we gotta start off with the design, and I gotta say, this thing looks really cool, and it's not actually as big as you would expect it to be. This is a blaster that is actually really reasonably sized. For a, like, really big heavy gunner blaster, I mean, like, here, let me put it next to the Rapid Strike for comparison. It's not that big, like, grip to stock, it isn't very big. If you put the grip to the grip, they're about the same size minus the stock. I was expecting this thing to be just like this giant nugget, like almost the size of the Macedon, but no, it's actually really reasonably sized and very easy to tightly brace against your body as like a CQB blaster, which is really ironic considering just how wide this thing is, and that is just a shield to protect the magazines from getting hit, which I will get into when we get to the functionality. But I love the design of the Hailfire. I think it perfectly encapsulates the first generation of N-Strike Elite and is a immediately recognizable as an elite blaster. This thing gives off all of the charm that any first gen elite blaster should, such as the original elite grip, the racing stripes going across it, and the fact that if you've just noticed, it is painted on both sides. Plus the cosmetics of this blaster in general just look very nice. It captures the stripes kind of grill a exit like tunnel thing here and the muzzle end being really interesting and sort of futuristic looking and very space age designed. The one downside of this is the removable shell because it's noisy. It is very noisy and this blaster isn't even that old. If we move on to the ergonomics, it's got an original elite grip and yup, 
it feels great on this blaster. In fact, I would argue that it feels better on this blaster than it does on the actual Strife, because the Strife's grip is a little bit too big for that blaster's proportions, in my opinion. I feel like the Strife is more of a pistol sized blaster than a primary sized blaster, unless, well, you go and turn it into a primary sized blaster. And the grip on the Strife just feels disproportionately large. I don't really like the way the Strife's grip feels when you don't have a stock, a barrel, and a foregrip on it. When you're just using it as a pistol, it feels too big for the blaster. This one perfectly makes use of it and feels very good on something like this. On top of that, the grip on this is a little bit longer than the stripes, giving you a little bit more room to get your hand around it. It's a nice comfy grip that feels very nice, smooth and filleted. Finger troils for everything except for between your pinky and ring finger, and honestly, it's just great. As for the foregrip up here, well, it's actually the perfect size to get all four of your fingers through. Thank you, Hasbro. And it feels very nice. Nice. The middle of the grip swivels so that you're able to, well, move it and do this with it, which is very important for later on, and that is how you index this rotation thing. Speaking of which, doing that is very nice, but first we've got to get onto the triggers. Surprisingly, being a mag-fed semi-auto blaster, it only has a rev trigger and a main trigger. No mag release. Now that might terrify you now, but don't worry, I will explain how that works later on. But first, let's start off with the rev trigger. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The rev trigger on the hail fire is magnificent. It feels just as good as the strife for a completely different reason. Wow, it just got really dark in this room all of a sudden. But look at this. It is a kind of Bobololo style almost, sort of like the thing that they did with the, uh, the ultra rev triggers, but it's actually fit perfectly for your whole finger to fit on it. The only thing I don't really like about it are these three ridges, which are actually detailed on the grip or on the trigger. I mean, they're a little bit too much detail. I think that's a little bit over detailed, but the trigger is very clicky and very responsive. As for the main trigger, oh, 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 it's so good. It is so snappy. It feels snappier than the strife and the double punch combined. This is single-handedly the greatest, most perfect main trigger on any flywheel blaster I have ever used in my life. It's so good, there's nothing to even compare it to. It's better than the double punch, it really is. It is so snappy, it is so poppy, it feels great. I know it's a geared pusher, which means that it is going to be harder to mod, but I honestly don't care. Oh, it feels so good to pull this trigger, but yeah, I kinda need to get onto how the mags work. So if you guys are terrified that this thing is friction fit, don't worry, because it isn't. You know how on an original Strife, when you put the magazine in, or there's, there's a small notch that clips into the back of the magazine right here in that little groove, and that locks it in place, and you can only pull the mag out when you pull down on the mag release? This essentially has the mag release permanently built in, and that notch is two-sided, and exists on all eight mag wells. It's that little peg right there. So you can easily put your magazine in and it clicks comfortably and doesn't fall out even if you shake the blaster a lot but then when you want to pull it out you just pull the magazine out it isn't very hard and it works way better than what I was expecting it to be I genuinely thought this thing was gonna be friction fit and I'm so happy that it isn't because friction fit sucks but how does this thing work well as I mentioned earlier you're meant to use eight magazines and it works the best with six round mags I have seven I'm so sorry for the people who have OCD. I know that this makes you feel incredibly nervous and I apologize greatly for that. But essentially the way this thing works is you shoot out of your first magazine and then to switch it, you push forwards on the pandle, the, the foregrip, and it rotates halfway. When you pull back, it rotates the rest of the way. And this is spring loaded. So if you just push on it and then pull back again, like this, then you don't have to worry about it because it will automatically advance. I don't even know what I'm talking about. All I know is that this works and it works questionably. Yeah, this is the biggest downside with the blaster because this is just a plastic geared mechanism and it isn't like machine refined it's really wibbly wobbly and if you wibbly wobbly the blaster too much it ends up kind of wibbly wobblying your darts if the mags aren't perfectly aligned with the barrel the darts get all misaligned they just fly all over the place and in hardcore parkour situations where you're going to be running with this thing fast numerous times when i was running and shooting the darts were just farting out and flying all over the place even with waffle heads, they weren't shooting straight and they weren't shooting consistently because this is just too loose of a mechanism, especially if you put seven 
magazines in. Not eight, just just seven. I don't know why this mag, but it's it's like busted or something. But if you just put four magazines in like this instead, and you need to make a plus sign because otherwise it just drags itself down too much. Why can't this fit? There we go. That actually works a lot better. And with this with this configuration here, I wasn't able to wibbly wobbly it enough to cause issues with the dart feed. Come on. Demonstrating the issues with feeding. mag is broken. We don't need it. We don't need it where we're going. So aside from that little hiccup with the last magazine, which just comes down to the mag being terrible, what do I think of the Nerf Hail Fire? It is an awesome blaster, and I want to shout out one of my fans. His name is Logan, and he's in my Discord server. I don't really know, like, what else to say other than the fact that he's really cool, and he sent me this blaster, and I'm really happy with it. So go check him out. He's a really cool dude, and thank you again for sending me this. But I understand why they never did it again, because not only is being stuck with eight darts or eight magazines for a total capacity already very limiting, but the fact that you can only really use it with six round magazines before this mechanism bogs itself down a lot is a really big problem. That gives you a maximum of 48 darts, and that is not enough to last an entire round without being able to reload at all. Not to mention, the mechanism is just very fiddly, and it just isn't the most reliable thing out there, especially if if you have the blaster tilted or like are running around a lot it's a lot of weight for just this one cylinder which is on a moving part and it likes to bend out of the way and it just doesn't work very well and the biggest problem with that is if you wanted to use practical magazine like the worker 22s that is just too much weight for this blaster to use you cannot angle it in any capacity or else it's too much weight it bends it down and the pusher is not able to reach the darts that is something that I tested a lot when I was playing around with this blaster for the review and it just I couldn't get it to work no matter how hard I tried There's nothing you can really do about that not even modding it could fix that unless you somehow replaced all the internals with metal parts And I really don't want to do that because this thing is already heavy enough And it is it gets really heavy when you put a lot of magazines in it But other than that it is honestly a cool blaster. It's a very interesting and unique concept, and I'm glad that Hasbro did it, even if they never did it again for the reasons that I mentioned just a moment ago. The concept of having all your magazines loaded into the blaster at the same time rather than having them on your body and being able to essentially remove your entire rig while just using a blaster is honestly really cool. If ultimately useless because you're still having to reload by doing this and you gotta be deliberate about it because as you saw in the firing demo, if you do it too fast, even with six round magazines, it gets stuck and it doesn't advance properly. So you gotta push it forward, wait for it to stop wiggling back and forth, and then and let go of it so that it moves back into place. Otherwise, it'll just snap back to its original position and it won't feed properly. So if anything, it's actually a little bit more deliberate to use this than just switching out magazines on a traditional strife. As a proof of concept blaster though, this Hailfire is actually really cool, and I love the idea even if it's ultimately useless. And with all that out of the way, I can happily present the Hailfire as the newest resident of the Nugget Dojo that is my nerf room. And you know what that means? You're on the chopping block, mate! I'm going to modify this thing, and I'm probably actually going to document the process of modding this whenever I get around to it. There's a few things that I have to fix first, mainly the Tesseract. It's, uh, it's broken. I also need to work out the kinks with this stupid nugget and then do a review on that. And there's a few other things that I need to work on before I can get started on the Hailfire. But oh boy, I look forward to the day where I can open this up and fuck rewire it for a 2S and then just be on my way. Just be on my way. So with that said, thank you guys for watching. Bye.